The siege of Antioch took place during the First Crusade in 1097 and 1098. The first siege by the Crusaders against the Muslim-held city lasted from the 21st of October 1097 to the 2nd of June 1098. Antioch lay in a strategic location on the Crusaders' route to Palestine. Supplies, reinforcements and retreat could all be controlled by the city. Anticipating that it would be attacked, the Muslim governor of the city, Yagi Siyan, began stockpiling food and sending requests for help. The Byzantine walls surrounding the city presented a formidable obstacle to its capture, but the leaders of the crusade felt compelled to besiege Antioch anyway. The crusaders arrived outside the city on 21 October and began the siege. The garrison sortie done successfully on 29 December. After stripping the surrounding area of food, the crusaders were forced to look farther afield for supplies opening themselves to ambush and while searching for food on 31 December, a force of 20,000 crusaders encountered a relief force led by Dukic of Damascus heading to Antioch and defeated the army. However, supplies dwindled and in early 1098 one in seven of the crusaders was dying from starvation and people began deserting in January. A second relief force, this time under the command of Ridwan of Aleppo, advanced towards Antioch, arriving on 9 February. Like the army of Dukic before, it was defeated. Antioch was captured on 3 June, although the citadel remained in the hands of the Muslim defenders. Kerboffer began the second siege against the Crusaders who had occupied Antioch, which lasted from 7 June to 28 June 1098. The second siege ended when the Crusaders exited the city to engage Kerboffer's army in battle and succeeded in defeating them. On seeing the Muslim army routed, the defenders remaining in the citadel surrendered. Background there are a number of contemporaneous sources relating to the siege of Antioch and the First Crusade. There are four narrative accounts, those of Fulcher of Chartres, Peter II de Bodder, and Raymond of Aguilés, and the anonymous Jester Francorum. Nine letters survive relating to or from the crusading army, five of them were written while the siege was underway and another in September. Not long after the city had been taken, while there are many sources the number of people on crusade is unclear because they fluctuated regularly and many non-combatants on pilgrimage accompanied the soldiers. Historian Jonathan Riley Smith offers a rough guide, suggesting that perhaps 43,000 people were involved in the siege of Nicaea in June 1097 while as few as 15,000 may have taken part in the siege of Jerusalem in July 1099. Lying on the slopes of the Orange Valley, in 1097 Antioch covered more than 3.5 square miles and was encircled by walls studded by 400 towers. The river ran along the city's northern wall before entering Antioch from the northwest and exiting east through the northern half of the city. Mount Silpius, crested by a citadel, was the Antioch's highest point and rose some 1,000 feet above the valley floor. There were six gates through which the city could be entered, three along the northern wall, and one on each of the south, east, and west sides. The valley slopes made approaching from the south, east, or west difficult. So the most practical access route for a large number of people was from the north across flatter ground. The city's defences dated from the reign of the Emperor Justinian I in the 6th century. Though Antioch changed hands twice between then and the arrival of the Crusaders in 1097, each time it was the result of betrayal rather than inadequacy of the defences. After the Byzantine Empire reconquered Antioch in 969 a program of fortification building was undertaken in the surrounding area to secure the gains. As part of this, a citadel was built on Mount Silpius in Antioch. High enough to be separate from the city below, historian Hugh Kennedy opined that it relied on inaccessibility as its main defense. At its fall to Seljuk Turks in 1085, Antioch was the last Byzantine fortification in Syria. 
Yagi Siyan was made governor of Antioch in 1087 and held the position when the Crusaders arrived in 1097. Yagi Siyan was aware of the approaching Crusader army as it marched through Anatolia in 1097. The city stood between the Crusaders and Palestine. Though under Muslim control, the majority of Antioch's inhabitants were Christians. Yagi Siyan had previously been tolerant of the Christian populace, however that changed as the Crusaders approached. To prepare for their arrival he imprisoned the Orthodox Patriarch of Antioch, John the Oxite, turned St. Paul's Cathedral into a stable and expelled many leading Christians from the city. Yagi Siyan then sent out appeals for help. His request was turned down by Ridwan of Aleppo because of personal animosity. However Yagi Siyan was more successful in his approaches to other nobles in the region and Dukic of Damascus, Totokan, Kerbofa, the sultans of Baghdad and Persia, and the emir of Homs all agreed to send reinforcements. Meanwhile, back in Antioch Yagi Siyan began stockpiling supplies in anticipation of a siege. Knowing they had to capture Antioch, the Crusaders considered how best to go about the task. Attrition suffered during the army's long journey across Anatolia meant the leaders considered leaving an assault until reinforcements arrived in spring. Tatikios, a Byzantine advisor to the crusade, suggested adopting tactics similar to those used by the Byzantines themselves when they moved to capture Antioch in 968. They had installed themselves at Bagras some 12 miles away and from there conducted a blockade of the city by cutting of its lines of communication. Raymond Devi, Count of Toulouse, was alone and advocated assaulting the city. In the end, the Crusaders chose to advance on Antioch and establish a siege close to Antioch. First Siege Starting the siege on 20 October 1097 they reached a fortified crossing, known as Iron Bridge, on the Orance River 12 miles outside Antioch. Robert II, Count of Flanders and Adhemar of Lapuy led the charge across the bridge, opening the way for the advancing army. Beaumont of Taranto took a vanguard along the river's south bank and headed towards Antioch on 21 October and the Crusaders established themselves outside the city's north wall. The Crusaders divided into several groups. Beaumont camped outside St. Paul's Gate near the northernmost corner of the city walls and immediately to the west were Hugh I, Count of Amandois, Robert Curthos, Duke of Normandy, Robert II, Count of Flanders, and Stephen II, Count of Blois, Adhemar of Lapuy and Raymond Devi, Count of Toulouse took up positions outside the dog gate either side of where the Oranus penetrated Antioch's defences. Godfrey of Bouillon was stationed west of the Duke's gate in the northwest of the city walls. The bridge across the Orents outside Antioch's west walls remained under Yagi Sayan's control at this point. The ensuing nine-month siege has been described as one of the great sieges of the age. The sources emphasized that a direct assault would have failed. For instance, Raymond of Aguilers noted that the chaplain of Raymond de V, Count of Toulouse, said, Antioch is so well fortified that it need not fear attack by machinery nor the assault of man, even if all mankind came together against it. According to Fulcher of Chartres, the leaders resolved to maintain the siege until the city was forced into submission. Though his figures may not be accurate, Raymond of Aguilers gave an account of the army defending the city. There were, furthermore, in the city 2,000 of the best knights, and four or 5,000 common knights and 10,000 more footmen. One of the problems of camping so close to the city was that it left the besiegers vulnerable to sorties from the garrison and even missiles. For the first fortnight of the siege the Crusaders were able to forage in the surrounding area as the defenders chose not to leave the safety of the city walls. However in November Yagi Siyan learned that the Crusaders felt the city would not fall to an assault so was able to turn his attentions from the defensive to harrying the besiegers. He mobilized his cavalry and began harassing the besiegers. 
with the immediate area stripped clean. The Crusaders' foraging parties had to search further afield for supplies leaving them more vulnerable and on several occasions were attacked by the garrisons of nearby fortifications. Yagi Saiyan's men also used the dog bridge outside the dog gate to harass the Crusaders. Adhimar of Lapui and Raymond of E's men, who were camped closest to the bridge attempted to destroy it using picks and hammers but made little impact on the strong structure while under missile fire from Antioch's defenders. Another attempt was made to render the bridge unusable, this time with a mobile shelter to protect the Crusaders but the garrison sorted and successfully drove them away. Soon after three siege engines were built opposite the dog gate. In the end, the crusaders erected a blockade on the bridge to obstruct potential sorties. The port of St. Simeon on the Mediterranean coast, nine miles west of Antioch would allow the crusaders to bring reinforcements. Raymond of Aguilers mentions that the English landed at the port before the crusade reached Antioch but did not record whether a battle for control of St. Simeon took place. Reinforcements in the former 13 genos of ships reached St. Simeon on 17 November, and though the route from Antioch to St. Simeon ran close to the city walls, meaning the garrison could impede travel, joined up with the rest of the crusaders. According to the Genos a chronicler Cafaro di Rustico da Cachafalone, the Genos have suffered heavy casualties en route from St. Simeon to Antioch. Bowman's troops built a counterfort outside St. Paul's Gate in Antioch's northeast wall to protect themselves against missiles from Antioch's defenders. Known as Malregard, the fort was built on a hill and probably consisted of earthen ramparts. The construction has been dated to around the time the Genos uh, arrived. The Crusaders were further bolstered by the arrival of Tancred, who set up camp to the west of his uncle, Beaumont. Winter as the Crusaders' food supply reached critical levels in December, Godfrey fell ill. On 28 December Beaumont and Robert of Flanders took about 20,000 men and went foraging for food and plunder upstream of the Orients. Knowing the Crusaders' force had been divided, Yagi Siyan waited until the night of 29 December before making a sortie. He attacked Count Raymond's encampment across the river, and though caught by surprise Count Raymond was able to recover and turn Yagi Siyan's men back. He almost succeeded in reversing the attack entirely forcing a way across the bridge and establishing a foothold on the other side and holding open the city gates. As the Crusaders threatened to take the city, a horse lost its rider and, in the ensuing confusion in the dark, the Crusaders panicked and withdrew across the bridge with the Turks in pursuit. The stalemate was restored, and both sides had suffered losses. Beaumont and Raymond of Flanders were unaware that their foraging party was heading towards Dukak's men. On 30 December news reached Dukak while his army was at Shiza that the Crusaders were nearby. On the morning of 31 December Dukak marched towards Beaumont and Raymond's army and the two met at the village of Albara. Robert was the first to encounter Dukak's men as he was marching ahead of Beaumont. Bowman joined the battle and with Robert fought back Dukark's army and inflicted heavy casualties. Though they fought off Dukark's army, which retreated to Hammer, the Crusaders suffered too many casualties to keep foraging and returned to Antioch. As a result of the fight the Crusaders lost the flock they had gathered for food and returned with less food than they needed. The month ended in auspiciously for both sides. There was an earthquake on 30 December, and the following weeks saw such unseasonably bad rain and cold weather that Dukic had to return home without further engaging the Crusaders. The Crusaders feared the rain and earthquake were signs they had lost God's favor, and to atone for their sins such as pillaging Adhimar of Lapui ordered that a three-day fast should be observed. In any case at this time supplies were running dangerously low, and soon after one in seven men was dying of starvation. Though local Christians brought food to the Crusaders they charged extortionate prices. 
The famine also affected the horses, and soon only 700 remained. The extent to which the Crusader army was affected is difficult to gauge. But according to Matthew of Edessa one in five crusaders died from starvation during the siege and the poorer members were probably worse off. The famine damaged morale and some knights and soldiers began to desert in January 1098, including Peter the Hermit and William the Carpenter. On hearing of the desertion of such prominent figures, Beaumont dispatched a force to bring them back. Peter was pardoned while William was berated and made to swear he would remain with the crusade. Spring The arrival of spring in February saw the food situation improve for the crusaders. That month Tatikios repeated his earlier advice to resort to a long-distance blockade but his suggestion was ignored. He then left the army and returned home. Tatikios explained to the Byzantine emperor Alexios I Komnenos that Beaumont had informed him that there was a plan to kill him, as they believed Alexios was secretly encouraging the Turks. Those close to Beaumont claimed that this was treachery or cowardice, reason enough to break any obligations to return Antioch to the Byzantines. News arrived that a Turkish army was approaching and Beaumont used the situation to his advantage. He declared that he would leave unless he was allowed to keep Antioch for himself when it was captured, knowing fully that Beaumont had designs on taking the city for himself and that he had probably engineered Tatikios' departure in order to facilitate this. Godfrey and Raymond did not give in to his demands, but Bowman gained the sympathies and cooperation of the minor knights and soldiers. Yagi Siyan had reconciled with Ridwan of Aleppo and the advancing army was under his command. In early February news reached the besiegers that Ridwan had taken nearby Harem where he was preparing to advance on Antioch. At Bowman's suggestion, the Crusaders sent all their cavalry to meet the advancing army while the infantry remained behind in case Antioch's defenders decided to attack. On the morning of 9 February, Ridwan moved towards the Iron Bridge. The Crusaders had moved into position the previous night and charged the advancing army before it reached the bridge. The first charge caused few casualties but Ridwan's army followed the Crusaders to a narrow battlefield. With the river on one side and the Lake of Antioch on the other, Ridwan was unable to outflank the Crusaders and exploit his superior numbers. A second charge had more impact and the Turkish army withdrew in disorder. At the same time, Yagi Siyan had led his garrison out of Antioch and attacked the Crusader infantry. His offensive was forcing the besiegers back until the knights returned. Realizing Ridwan had been defeated, Yagi Siyan retreated inside the city. As Ridwan's army passed through Harim panic spread to the garrison he had installed there and they abandoned the town, which was retaken by the Christians. According to Orderic Vitalis an English fleet led by Edgar Atling, the exiled king of England, arrived at St. Simeon on 4 March carrying supplies from the Byzantines. Historian Stephen Runciman repeated the assertion, however it is unknown where the fleet originated and would not have been under Edgar's command. Regardless, the fleet brought raw materials for constructing siege engines, but these were almost lost on the journey from the port to Antioch when part of the garrison sallied out. Beaumont and Raymond escorted the material, and after losing some of the materials and 100 people, they fell back to the Crusader camp outside Antioch. Before Beaumont and Raymond, rumors that they had been killed reached Godfrey who readied his men to rescue the survivors of the escort. However, his attention was diverted when another force sallied from the city to provide cover for the men returning from the ambush. Godfrey was able to hold off the attack until Beaumont and Raymond came to his aid. The reorganized army then caught up with the garrison before it had reached the safety of Antioch's walls. The counter-attack was a success for the Crusaders and resulted in the deaths of between 1,200 and 1,500 of Antioch's defenders. 
The Crusaders set to work building siege engines, as well as a fort, called Lama Homeri, to block the bridge gate and prevent Yagi Siyan attacking the Crusader supply line from the ports of St. Simon and Alexandretta, whilst also repairing the abandoned monastery to the west of the gate of St. George, which was still being used to deliver food to the city. Tancred garrisoned the monastery, referred to in the chronicles as Tancred's Fort, for 400 silver marks, whilst Count Raymond of Toulouse took control of La Mohomery. Finally the Crusader siege was able to have some effect on the well-defended city. Food conditions improved for the Crusaders as spring approached and the city was sealed off from raiders. Fatimid Embassy In April a Fatimid Embassy from Egypt arrived at the Crusader camp, hoping to establish a peace with the Christians, who were, after all, the enemy of their own enemies, the Seljuks. Peter the Hermit, who was fluent in Arabic, was sent to negotiate. These negotiations came to nothing. The Fatimids, assuming the Crusaders were simply mercenary representatives of the Byzantines, were prepared to let the Crusaders keep Syria if they agreed not to attack Fatimid Palestine, a state of affairs perfectly acceptable between Egypt and Byzantium before the Turkish invasions, but the Crusaders could not accept have a settlement that did not give them Jerusalem. Nevertheless, the Fatimids were treated hospitably and were given many gifts, plundered from the Turks who had been defeated in March and no definitive agreement was reached.